I've made videos in the past where a lot of heating and air pros seem to take exception to the, the things that I'm doing videos on. And I think it's part of the reason why sometimes it's hard to make friends in this industry. Sometimes they are either, maybe they don't want the truth to get out. I don't know, but I was watching a video from a guy this past week that is a, I mean, I guess he's a pretty prominent individual in our trade. He certainly is employed by one of the more prominent organizations and he looks older and, and distinguished, and so he looks smart, but then he makes a comment. I'm gonna tell you what the comment was. The comment was, ductwork can't be too large, and if you have someone tell you that it can be, then they don't know what they're talking about. Don't take their advice. And maybe I don't have it exactly word for word, but that's pretty much what he said. I think that, first of all, that that is not true. I'm going to show you why in this video, why that's not true. I'm gonna give you three scenarios. I think his exact comment, it was something to the effect of, there is no scenario that ductwork is too big. And I'm gonna show you three scenarios in this video. And I could probably show you more, but I'm gonna just show you three scenarios that ductwork can be too big. I was reluctant to even do this video. I've done other videos where I've gotten hateful emails or comments on our videos. But when you see guys make comments like this, and then you as the homeowner, you may even have a heating and air guy come in your home that's heard that and, and is regurgitating that. And they say to you, if you have another guy say that ductwork is too big, then they don't know what they're talking about. And they're just repeating the same stuff to sound smart. I just think it's, I don't know, it's ignorant if nothing else. It's just a little odd. I'm going to show you in this video three scenarios where ductwork can be too big. Now, I do think there's some context that can be had here, right? Are there scenarios where the ductwork can't be too big, yes. If you've got a return duct in most residential applications, it's a good thing for it to be bigger. It can't be too big. That's probably a, a safe blanket statement to make, right? So there is some context to be had with that. There are times where his statement is true, especially in a world where most ductwork today is undersized. Most ductwork that I see when I go into a house here in Virginia, at least I would say the majority of the new construction ductwork we see installed is undersized. It's not big enough to carry the amount of airflow. And, and we see a scenario or a, a day and age now where most heating and air systems are starving for air. I think that there is a reason why he may be saying what he's saying. And he goes later in the video and talks about the registers and the throw of the air and, and all these different things. But that's not the point here. His blanket statement is there's no scenario that ductwork can be oversized. And I think that's untrue. And I'm going to show you why. But before we do, I just want to thank our sponsor for this video. Here's a short clip from Aeroseal. I wanted to take a quick break from the video and thank the sponsor of this video, AeroSeal. Leaky ductwork is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, energy wasters in most homes in the United States. And my favorite way of fixing that problem is AeroSeal. They'll come into your home, they'll test your ductwork and how leaky it is, they'll seal all the ductwork with a machine, and then they'll test it again and make sure that you got what you paid for. Customers have reported a significant savings on their energy bills after using AeroSeal. I'll put a link down in the description of this video. Thanks again to AeroSeal, and now let's get back to the video. So here we go, guys. Three scenarios where ductwork can be oversized. Bear with me. We're going to use some graphics here, and I'm going to make it real simple. I hope that any homeowner and pro, if a pro happens to catch this video, where we show that ductwork can be oversized. Now, I will say that in all of these scenarios, we're talking about the supply side because I think, again, in most scenarios, the return is it's okay to make it larger. The bigger, the better. The more airflow, the less restriction and so on. But, but with supply, there are scenarios where it can be oversized. Scenario number one. So I'm going to be drawing this out. Let's just say we've got a small house with a two ton heat pump system and an air handler. Very simple setup. Most ranchers with eight foot ceilings that have somewhere between, I don't know, a thousand to 1200 square feet here in Virginia. This is the type of setup we're going to see. Small home that someone may have that they've added a heat pump system to. And I'm going to show you just real easily how we get to that part where the ductwork is 
oversized. And so we're gonna just draw out the floor plan here. And let's just say, again, we're looking at say a thousand to 1200 square feet, normal house, as far as the floor plan. Let's just say we've got, you know, let's say the living room is here. And then let's say we've got the kitchen here. And then let's just say we've got a, a bedroom, a bedroom and a small bathroom small full bath. So just a small house. In fact, I grew up in a house very similar to this. The floor plan isn't laid out this simple, but I want it to be simple so you can see what I'm talking about. We said we've got a two ton system. So we're gonna run probably a, a six inch to each bedroom. Let's say it's about hundred square feet, hundred to 150 square feet. The kitchen and living room are gonna be probably Let's just say the living room and kitchen are equally 350 square feet. That's just for our little example here. So we're probably gonna run a couple ducks to each one of those. And then we're gonna run, in most cases, we would run just a small duct to that bathroom, you know, maybe a, a five inch duct, maybe even a four inch in some scenarios. But most scenarios, we're gonna probably do a five inch, depending on the layout of all the duct work. But getting back to our, the, the point we're trying to make here in this video is this guy says no duct work, it, it can't be oversized. What if during the layout of this duct work, so we've got our air handler here, we've got the return connecting here. And then we've got the supply coming off here. So here's our supply trunk and all of our branch lines coming off. And let's just say that this bathroom right here, we just go ahead and run us a three foot, three foot big around flex duct. Like I don't even think they make flex duct that big, but let's just say they do. Big old three foot around supply duct coming off of our supply on our trunk right here. And we just, we just cut a big hole in the ceiling of that room. He said ductwork can't be too oversized. So here we are, we've got this big three foot big duct into this tiny little bathroom. And imagine the amount of airflow that now that we've cut a big hole in that trunk, how the rest of these ducts are affected. Imagine in that living room, how much air is now gonna make it to that large room now that you've installed this three foot 36 inch in diameter round duct into that bathroom, right? Now, of course I'm being ridiculous. I'm being extreme. We're using extreme examples here. I'm trying to show you the guy that said this is the one that said that ductwork can't be too big. Well, that's just simply, as you can see, not true, right? The rest of the ductwork would be affected if it was in air conditioning mode that bathroom would become a meat locker while the rest of the house probably struggled to reach or keep temperature. It just shows you one example of why saying that ductwork just can't be oversized is just untrue. Okay, so that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is it plays very similar into what we just looked at it from a floor plan st standpoint, but let's just look at just a trunk line in general. So if we've got our air handler here and we've got our trunk line that comes off, and then let's say we've got all of our branch lines that come off towards the end here. We don't wanna come off the very end of this trunk, then that affects our air, right? So we, we need that to be capped and we need to come back at least a foot from the end of the trunk before we install our first branch line. And we've got several branch lines off the end of that. And imagine if we were to, again, install a three foot duct round duct coming off of this trunk line here. How would that affect these ducts further down the line? Imagine, I've, I've actually used this analogy, I believe it was one of our live shows recently where we talked about how a straw, I think in the analogy that this guy that made this statement, he uses a garden hose, but let's just say a straw. So you're gonna, you're gonna blow through a straw, right? And then let's just say we tape the end of that straw, okay? We're gonna regulate, we're gonna put the same amount of pressure through that straw, but now we're gonna take a needle or something and poke a bunch of holes in the end of that straw and blow. And you might start to feel some air come out of those holes. You know, you're, you're blowing through the straw, you've got air coming out of those small holes at the end. And then take that straw and then just take a pair of scissors and cut just a hole. Cut half of that duct open there, straw I mean, not duct. And now you've got this gigantic hole in the side of that straw and you're trying to blow the same amount of air through there. Imagine those holes at the end of the straw near where it's taped, how much air they're gonna get then. I would argue that they are gonna get very little air, if any. Most of the air is gonna take the path of least resistance in that scenario. That air is gonna go out where you've now cut a hole in the side of that straw. And then finally, the third analogy, 
would be in a lot of homes we see here in the US, we will see the trunk line often teed, okay? Now, sometimes it's done well, right? To not affect the static of the air in that trunk, but sometimes it's not done well. Sometimes it's got lots of dead ends and corners and so on. Let's just say, just roughly here, let's say we've got our furnace here and we've got our coil mounted on top of that for our air conditioning. And we're gonna come off of that and then we're gonna have a T coming off of it. And this is not uncommon. This, this could be vertical, it could be horizontal. We've seen that in some crawl spaces and things like that. We might see it in an attic where the furnace is upright and upflow. So we've got our furnace here, we've got our coil and we've got our T here. And in a lot of cases, depending on how the house is laid out, let's just say that this end of the house only needs say 400 CFMs. So this side of the T might really neck down here or just be a smaller side of the T and you might only have say a 10 inch round or some sort of you know smaller square duct going to that end. We might see a larger, whether it's a 12 inch round or bigger square duct going to this end of the house. Well, what if you were to just say flip that T? I mean, he's saying that you can't oversize it. So let's say that we were to do a 12 inch round here. And actually instead of flipping it, we'll just do a 12 inch round here and you're not necking it down like you should. Ductwork can't be oversized. In fact, the end of the house that needs 400 CFMs instead of doing a 12 inch round, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a 20 inch round to that end of the house. We got 12 inch here and we're gonna go ahead and just do a really big 20 inch to this end of the house. Part of the house that only needs say 400 CFMs on our original drawing, our duculator here says that you would be looking at somewhere over 2000 depending on what you're using for your supply uh, static, you know, you see we got 20 inches. We could be up over, if you're using 0.1, up over 2,500, over 2,000 if you're using 0 0.08 or even 0 0.07 in this scenario. Much larger than what you actually need. But again, as he said, ductwork can't be oversized. I don't know if that helps at all. I think just in general, I'm seeing this trend of guys saying things like that. There's these guys in positions where folks are listening to them and they'll make blanket statements. It almost reminds me of politics when folks will say blanket statements and just kind of make a, a statement overall kinds of scenarios. When in reality, we need a little context here and to say something like, hey, all ductwork cannot be oversized. And if someone says that it can be oversized and they don't know what they're talking about, it just shows his ignorance, to be honest with you. Here he is at working for a prominent organization with a very good reputation, and he's gonna make comments like that. So I think it's silly. I think it's ignorant. I think it's why I probably don't get invited to some of those <laughs> events and things like that, but I'm okay with that. I hope this helps you if you're a homeowner in the market for a heating and air system. The goal here is to hopefully help you with that. Hopefully you learn something and hopefully you're making an informed decision when you're hiring for your next heating and air installation. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about four fixes for leaky ductwork. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.